Good afternoon, welcome friends and colleagues. Thank you for being here today. Welcome to the Water Forum's 20th anniversary celebration and our symposium on climate, climate change and its nexus with water, the environment and communities. I really appreciate y'all being here. Our preference is to meet you with you in person. Um, when we began planning this event many months ago before the pandemic, we were planning to meet with you all in person. Um, the disadvantage of this format is that it, it removes us. Um, there is a small advantage and that is I think we, uh, we have uh, upward of 300 folks registered for today. And I'm not sure we would have gotten all those folks in person. So we'll take the good with the bad. I wanna welcome you all again. I also wanna take a minute and just um, welcome and recognize a couple of state officials that we have with us today. Assembly member Kevin McCarty is here. Hello, Assembly member, thanks for joining us. And Sean McGuire, member of the State Water Resources Control Board. Welcome, both of you. We also have about two dozen local um, elected officials, um, including Jeff Harris of the City of Sacramento, and also members of the boards of several of our water agency organizations. So thank you, um, friends and colleagues, for being here. And we really appreciate your time and your attention to this. Let's jump right in. Um, we are gonna talk about the nexus of climate change and our world of water. And so I can't think of anyone better to introduce our keynote speaker than Robert Dugan. Robert has been working in, uh, in the field of water for over 20 years, excuse me, for, since the 2000s. And he has been on the, uh, the board of Placer County Water Agency where he's currently the chair. He's been there for about eight years. Um, Robert is gonna introduce our keynote speaker. And so without ado, um, welcome, a community, uh, a community leader, a resource manager, um, and um, a representative of our keynote sponsor, Robert Dugan. Great. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate that. It is my pleasure to be here today to introduce Lieutenant Governor Eleni Konolakis. You know, the, the last time I got to introduce Eleni uh, was at a uh, Metro Chamber Forum trying to find practical ways that we could increase both market rate and subsidized affordable housing uh, for our workforce. And that really ties into what we're doing here today because Eleni has an amazing record of service, not just to our community, but also to our state and our country. And it includes serving in one of the highest diplomatic capacities of our nation as our United States ambassador. But prior to her public service, Eleni, many of us knew her as president of one of California's most respected housing development firms, AKT Development, where she led the development of master plan communities and delivered high cost, high, excuse me, high quality housing at affordable rates to Sacramento region's working families. And I can tell you she was a leader among her peers. Uh, and that certainly transitioned into the role that she played in helping us here uh, with the Water Forum because uh, it was in this capacity that Ambassador Kunalakis and Eleni, forgive me, I never know whether to call you ambassador or lieutenant governor, but uh, you entrenched yourself in the early discussions of what would become the Water Forum Agreement. Uh, you were critical to the collaboration that ensued and ultimate success of the Water Forum over the past 20 years. So it's really great to have you back. I, I would be remiss if I didn't just mention briefly uh, that from 2010 to 2013, Eleni served as President Barack Obama's ambassador to the Republic of Hungary on our behalf. Uh, she was the first Greek American woman and one of the America's youngest to ever serve as a U.S. ambassador, which she did so uh, remarkably. She went on to be appointed by then Governor Jerry Brown to chair the California Advisory Council for International Trade and Investment. She has served as a virtual fellow at the U.S. Department of State Bureau of Intelligence and Research and is currently a director of the Association of American Ambassadors and a National Democrat Institute advisor. Uh, you know, we all know that Eleni is passionate about early childhood development. Uh, she served as a member of California's First Five Commission and the Blue Ribbon Commission on Autism as well. Uh, she was sworn in as the 50th Lieutenant Governor of California by Governor Gavin Newsom on January 17th in 2019. She's the first woman elected Lieutenant Governor of California. She's a native Californian 
And she did, this is something that many constitutional officers cannot claim, but she visited each of the state's 58 counties during her historic campaign. You know, that's who Eleni is. I would say equally important, however, I believe she's the most qualified person that has ever held that office, certainly in my lifetime. So with that, it's my pleasure to welcome Eleni Konolakis. Thank you so much for being here and being our keynote speaker here this morning. Robert, thank you so much. It's great to see you again. And thank you to PCWA, uh, everyone at the Water Forum. It's really such an honor uh, to be back and to all of the participants in today's celebration of 20th anniversary of the Water Forum Agreement. You know, students very often when I'm traveling the state and visiting CSU, UC campuses, they ask me, they say, well, how did you become Lieutenant Governor? How did you become a US ambassador. And the fact of the matter is that my pathway took me squarely through the Sacramento Water Forum Agreement. And it's hard to believe it was actually about 22 years ago uh, that I joined it. Uh, the effort had already been underway. And somehow someone reached out to my father and said, you know, this effort is going forward. Uh, there are uh, businesses represented as well as uh, representatives from natural resource managers, from cities, counties, water agencies, but we want to make sure that we have the voice of business. And at the time, and to this day, but certainly back in those years when my father was the most productive, uh, we were basically leading uh, the development of new growth areas in the Sacramento region where thousands of families live today. And so they asked him, well, why don't you, why, don't, why doesn't AKT join as a water forum member? He said, sure. And then he sent me down to the meetings. And I, I will tell you, um, I remember my very first meeting and they were long. They were like two or three hour long meetings. So everyone had come into the room and uh, they were mingling with one another. And I remember seeing, cause I knew most of the players, uh, but I remember seeing like the environmentalists with the cargo shorts and the sandals standing next to the guys with the suit and tie, you know, pouring their coffee, chit-chatting about what they'd done over the weekend and just kind of getting ready to settle in for the conversation. And I was pretty amazed because if you go back to those years, uh, there was an enormous amount of discord around water use in the Sacramento region, in particular in the Placer, El Dorado, Sacramento counties. Anytime diversions were proposed, there were lawsuits, um, everybody was fighting, no one could find common ground. And, uh, and here we were in this room and I understood that it'd been going on for a year or two. So people already knew each other, but they had already created this really kind of extraordinary rapport where um, they owned their roles as stakeholders, but also owned their roles as members of a greater community that had problems that need to be resolved. And I was very impressed at how far this group had already come in working together. And then as the meeting started, I understood why there was a woman, a mediator uh, by the name of Susan Sherry. And I know that many of you remember her, uh, but she was, oh, I think I see her. There she is. <laughs> Hello, Susan. <laughs> Hi, Eleni. So Susan, I, I, I will tell you, you know, I, if you Google my name, what pops up, is American diplomat. I think the first experience that I had with a truly capable and seasoned diplomat was watching you in the water forum, bringing people together. And I don't know if the name Marie Jovanovich means anything to you, but I work very closely with Marie in the foreign service. And I will tell you, you are in my book among the very top uh, in terms of the people who I have had the opportunity to witness in bringing people together. And it really was 
an important lesson to me. And, and it was a role model that, that I carried forward. But what was happening in this space through these, you know, meeting after meeting in this process um, was that folks had been very clear about where they stand, about what their priorities are, whether it was water diversions or water meters or protecting the fish and the, the, uh, and the fisheries and the ecosystems. And everyone knew what everyone else's priorities were and no one was being asked to abandon their values or their priorities. What was being asked is that everyone worked together to find where that common ground was. And it turns out there was a lot of common ground. Uh, and so when we look at the achievements of the Water Forum, um, you know, I remember those conversations mm -hmm. about whether or not the city of Sacramento, whose charter, charter said that Sacramentans would never be limited on how much water they could use, that the charter would have to be changed. I remember the environmentalists who were absolutely clear saying that if we do not regulate Folsom Dam in a way that ensures that water releases do not change the temperature of the water, the fish will die and the ecosystem will be destroyed. And the fact of the matter is that that common ground was found and 20 years ago, the Water Forum Agreement was signed. And it is an extraordinary accomplishment. And I am very proud to have been a signatory. In my current job, uh, I have also had the opportunity to intersect with the successor effort to the Water Forum Agreement. And as we know, uh, part of that successor effort was to do restoration projects. And in my role as LG, I am the alternating chair of the State Lands Commission. And last year, uh, Sacramento, City of Sacramento came forward with a restoration project that required the uh, sign off of the State Lands Commission. And it was a great pleasure to both hear the presentation, see the fulfillment of that important obligation, and to be able to vote in favor of proceeding with it. So a lot of things come full circle. Uh, and I, again, I guess I just, you know, want to say you just never know where your life is going to lead you. But that time that I spent uh, and what it meant to me and what I learned and not just about water issues and environmental issues, which I had been learning in my, in my role as a businesswoman, but in seeing what is possible in American democracy when people come together with a commitment to fix problems and find solutions. Uh, so I thought I might talk a little bit about some of the state priorities and issues and things that are happening at the state level that really squarely intersect with so many of the priorities of the Water Forum. Um, you know, right now, I'm sure everyone is aware, uh, this fire season is the most devastating in our history in terms of the number of acres burned. Over 3% of the state of California has burned this fire season alone. Five of the six largest wildfires in our history um, have happened this fire season, and the largest single recorded fire of over uh, 1 million acres uh, is actually still burning, but fortunately mostly under control. Um, we know that the conditions that have been set in our state uh, that have resulted in these fires are the direct result of a warming planet and global warming. And California is very focused on being a leader uh, in both dealing with uh, the the outfall and coping with the results of climate change, but also being very forward leaning, uh, not just in the country as we are, because California is still in the Paris Climate Accord, even though Washington is trying to divert us out of it, uh, but in the world. So one of the things I'm very fortunate uh, uh, happened is when Governor Newsom and I both 
uh, took our office, he asked me to serve by executive order as California's representative for international affairs and trade. The number one issue uh, in that portfolio is speaking out on climate change and on combating climate change. In fact, the first international trip I took was to China for the Belt and Road Initiative, where I did not speak to any of the other elements of Belt and Road. I stayed squarely in the space of climate change and calling for China and the rest of the world to follow California's lead in investing in solutions that will help us meet our 2045 goals of becoming carbon neutral, will help us invest in the innovation that we're going to need, whether it's carbon capture or improving battery technology or bringing down the cost of zero emission vehicles, uh, and to uh, truly work to, to uh, not just uh, get the world to retreat from our carbon emissions um, patterns, uh, but also to find ways to address the climate, the, the, the changes that have already happened in terms of carbon sequestration and carbon capture. So I'm very proud of our state in the fact that this is more than just words. It's more than just um, a political commitment or a, a, a popular commitment. All of that is true, but it is also the reality on the ground in terms of the commitment that we're seeing by the private sector to move toward these goals as well. Uh, I have uh, had the opportunity to visit our national laboratories where scientists are working every day on these issues. And um, for those of you who don't know, um, in California, our second largest export are zero emission vehicles, second largest export. Thank you, Tesla. Uh, and, uh, and so this is an area that I think is very important for all of us who care about finding those solutions as the water forum has proven between protecting our climate, our, our, our planet, uh, between fighting uh, a warming climate and combating climate change and protecting our environment for future generations, but also recognizing that we can do this without compromising on the need to take care of our families, whether it's making sure they have clean drinking water or making sure that they have jobs. California has proven now for decades that you can protect the environment and grow the economy at the same time. You do it better than anyone. And again, the Water Forum is a great testament of this. Uh, so I guess maybe I just say one more thing before I hand it back over. Um, Robert mentioned that uh, I went to 58 counties during my campaign. Uh, I really feel that it's an important part of any statewide elected official's job to be out and about in the state and really out there listening to people. And so just last week, I had the opportunity to go north to the North State. I went to the Oroville Dam. I met with engineers who were there on the ground saving the Oroville Dam from collapse and rebuilding uh, the new spillway and the old spillway uh, to make sure that the safety of the dam and the people who live downstream from it is ensured. Uh, I had the opportunity to visit the, sites, the site of the site's reservoir and hear from proponents there who were working to begin their process to build um, public awareness and bring in community input and engagement uh, for that project that has been discussed and been around for a, a long time. And again, uh, in that case, I was brought back in my mind to the time of the water forum and advised them in what kind of inclusive process will be necessary for any major water project. In fact, I remember vividly, um, if there was any contribution that I made to the water forum, it was going back to my father and other members of the business community and telling them, no Auburn Dam. The Water Forum has made it clear that part of this part of this process will be that Auburn Dam is off the table, and uh, that was back in you know in the late '90s. Uh, still, something that people were looking at, and really, it is a question of these large sixty-year-old water projects that we build 
And now in 2020, how we see is the future of, uh, of ensuring that we have the infrastructure we need with the values that are so important to us of protecting California's very sensitive and valuable ecosystem. Uh, so um, again, a great honor to be here with all of you. I can't really, let's see, I might be able to scroll through and, oh no, I can't see all of the 250 participants, but to everybody who participated in that process, to all of you who continue to do so, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for the practical outcomes of the Water Forum and the successor effort. And thank you mostly for being an extraordinary model, one that I carry with me to this day of what is possible when stakeholders come together and commit themselves to finding solutions for all of our people and all of our families. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor Kunalakis. We were honored that you were here today and thanks for the kind words. Thanks for creating a foundation on which we're all standing today. Um, we just appreciate um, all, this, all the support you, you gave us back in the day and you've given us since. Speaking of support, I would like to take a few minutes to thank uh, some organizations that made today's program possible. Uh, I'm going through our sponsors, um, and uh, I believe on the screen we're going to have a picture with a bunch of logos. You'll also notice the logos on the bottom of many of our PowerPoints. You know, it's just, it's kind of like when you watch PBS, right? Thank our proud sponsors: Placer County Water Agency, Sacramento County Water Agency. City of Sacramento Department of Utilities, the San Juan Water District, SMUD, the Sacramento Municipal Utility District, MMS Strategies, Cal American Water, CBEC Eco Engineering Company, Stantec Engineers, the Consensus Building Institute, the Regional Water Authority, City of Roseville, Sac Suburban Water District, Ascent Environmental Consultants, the City of Folsom, GEI Consulting, and HDR Consulting, and West Yost Consulting. And last but not least, the Regional Water Authority's Water Efficiency Program and Blue Diamond Almond Growers. Can you all please give me a virtual round of, of applause for, for our sponsors? Thank you very much. So let's move into